my friends, my name is Vladimir. Welcome back to my channel. Just a few episodes ago, we had a test flight of the MAL MX-7. This is a stall aircraft, the so-called bush plane. And we promised you in the previous episodes to compare it to this plane here. And finally, I can say that they are absolutely incomparable. Two completely different planes that have big wheels in common. Please, welcome. Just Aircraft Superstall. Well, I'll be trying to compare one with the other. Why so? Because MX-7 will be just a basis for comparison. Probably, if to think in terms of practicality, what is MAL MX-7? This is a nice airplane, which is basically used just for some practical purposes. This one was created with only one purpose, just for fun, just to entertain you. So, Just Aircraft is quite a young company, in aviation standards anyway. I mean, they've been producing aircraft since 2002. Actually, it's a sports plane for pleasure, and there's one person to prove it. He's the world champion, let's say, in short takeoffs and landings. His name is Steve Henry, and it is by means of Just Aircraft's plane, he achieved an amazing result. Imagine two and a half feet which means the man was able to take off from a distance of three feet. I think that if we talk about the history of this plane, the story of the so-called bush planes was divided into two categories. The first... These planes were used in a practical sense and land on off-roads, such as Maul. It's also the Beaver. It is the AN-2, although I don't know how many pieces of the stall aircraft it would be possible to make from the AN-2, but they are all in the same category. And most likely, these planes, probably all of them were descended from their great-granddad or great-grandma, but rather from the first, it's Piper Club. In its time, this plane became iconic, and on its basis, other variations started to appear. People began to design something new, something interesting. And they are, for example, such cool planes, Kit Fox. In other words, experimental planes. So you can easily buy and assemble it yourself in the garage. And this one is also not certified. It rather belongs in the experimental category, because you can buy a kit and build it yourself. And essentially... If you think a little bit, with an empty plane weighing 720 pounds and powered by a 135 horsepower engine, this baby is amazing. And to land and take off from 70 to 100 feet, it's quite possible for this plane. Retract the flaps? Yeah, and pull the lever on yourself. He's so cool. I mean, really for fun. This process really sucks you in. But you're kind of watching and thinking, so what? I mean, okay, you flew somewhere and landed at 65 meters. What's the point? But that's the whole point. You're just having fun. And if you've done first, second, third landing, you get the thrill of repeating that experience again and again. Take off from a shorter distance or land where no one can even reach on foot. All right. So the sequence of actions is as follows. The first time you fly around the area to make sure there are no obstacles. The second time you make an identical rectangular pattern flight. You're coming, the wheels touch the ground, but don't put all the weight on the wheels. I mean, so without shutting down the engine, you keep rolling and you see if there are any pits in the way in case of something, the plane still has lift on the wing. 
The next step is to make exactly the same rectangular pattern flight. Touch the ground and try whether it's possible now to break or not. You slow down and then at full speed go to the second lap. And a third time, you touch the ground, you know you can slow down and then finally land. Look, I'm getting a kick out of this, really. You see? Imagine yourself flying over the lake, and along it there's a small path and you land there or you're trying to land between traffic cones, purely a sport. But it turned out that this plane isn't so easy for others to master. You just have a lot of experience, so right from the start you felt what to do. Not exactly. All my flights have been long. I mean long distance. There's also something special in that, you know? I deeply like this feeling when you wake up in the morning and decide, quite often, we are figuring out in the flight, where we will have lunch today. In Switzerland or Italy, and here it's more like by which river or which peak will die. The structure of this aircraft is quite simple. It is a metal vault frame, meaning the aircrafts of this company are initially made durable for high loads due to the heavy landings they are covered with the special fabric on the outside. By the way, the term rag plane, it's a big misunderstanding. Because people think that if it's covered with cloth, it means it's cheap or it's not durable at all. But essentially, this is one of the most durable and reliable designs, as in its basis is a very strong steel frame. It's ready to take a lot of load, and the fabric in general is very efficient. It makes the aircraft aerodynamic. It is very light, and most importantly, in the case of damage to the aircraft, which is happening quite often, this fabric will easily be repaired, and let's say, even if you make a rough landing and bend the plane in half, so this part can be completely cut off and replaced. You know, I've seen people who don't just tape up the damage with the duct. When their bracing were broken, they attached tree branches to them, and it was duct tape, and they flew back. And all this repair was done in the woods with an axe. Their plane flipped and the wing broke. What did they do? They cut down a real log in the forest, leveled the wing, and made kind of a support out of the log and flew. In the world of aviators, there are clans. There are people who love to fly far, fast, to travel. I'm one of them. And again, it just got me back to thinking that I really like the challenges. I mean, I like to land in difficult airports, especially in bad weather. And there are people who fly for high pilotage. But with this one, it's like the opposite. It gives you the opportunity to fly somewhere where you can find a truly wild place to be alone with nature and no one else is out there. But unfortunately, it won't be the safest shelter from bears. By the way, now I understand why you're flying barefoot, because I could imagine my big foot in shoes on this little pedal slipping down, and it also has a tendency, it's inertia in the case of turns. It almost moves and slides all the time, and you have to be ready, especially at the airport, that the plane itself can take off a little, can slightly rise in the air, because of a gust of air? Yeah. If we talk about the design of this airplane, I'll repeat myself. Its weight is 720 pounds and it moves due to the engine Rotax 912. This particular aircraft has a 912 engine of 135 horsepower and turbocharged. Does it need a turbocharger? My opinion's no. But when you're on this plane and you can enjoy keeping your engine running while you're kind of hovering in the air, in that case, the turbocharger effect is just a problem. But on the other hand, it has an amazing effect on takeoff when you need to take off from a short distance. In this case, the turbine helps. But this particular plane that we're having today on the test flight is a Superstall Rotax 912, and basically this plane, I mean, the kit itself can be bought and assembled in the garage. 
The cost of this kit is around 35000 at here in engine. If you would buy a not new one, Rotax, so you can buy it for six to $7,000, and the new one cost about $15,000 and also some pieces of avionics, this, in my opinion, can be obtained at the nearest airfield to beg for some old devices from them. For this plane, this will be enough. It doesn't need much. You get the thrill of buying a plane, the thrill of having built one yourself, the thrill of being able to fly it and fly it to the places that you can never really get to. Mall MX-7, why are we talking about it? Because from the very beginning, it was the starting point. It is a land cruiser in the world of aviation. My point is, it's a really cool buggy. Yeah, it's true that you can't go far on a buggy and take a lot of things with you, but it makes you feel really cool and experience a lot of fun. Well, this plane definitely was designed only for fun. It won't do much for practical use. Or we just need another view. But pleasure is not a questionable reason to fly it. As soon as you put two traffic cones and someone else tries it, then immediately wakes up the excitement to repeat it. I swear, it's an adrenaline that slowly spreads through your veins, you know. It doesn't give you a sudden emotional explosion, rather gradually. By the way, it has a distinctive point. What is immediately striking? These bush wheels. What do they give you? The ability to take off from a short distance and land somewhere on the grass. It will be enough and small wheels for that. It may even make the plane fly faster, but these particular wheels give you the possibility of landing, for example, on the bank of a river with rocks. It will do that easily. However, the main problem with these planes, the first is to learn how to fly them properly. Because if you get to the point of takeoff, then most likely you will be able to take off. This is the first thing you need to learn to do. Because I myself once got my ass kicked by an instructor pilot when I decided to pull the brakes at the AN-2 landing. He didn't have time to say anything like, what are you doing? He just slapped me. And with this plane, it's also important to be pretty careful when you land. Because if you put the brakes on, the plane can land on its nose very easily. So, in these bush planes, the propeller is considered expendable. That is, it's such an interchangeable part, and the person who has a similar aircraft, he always has several spare propellers. I'd say it's pretty comfortable for two of us here, and it's considering that we're two men. Yeah, although not the biggest, but not the smallest ones, actually. Right now, let's move in a straight line, slow down to 40 miles per hour, and then raise the flaps to the upper position. To the highest position? Yeah, pull lever on yourself to slow the plane down. You know, to be honest, I'm really scared to fly at these little speeds. All right, go, go. You know, I'm used to flying something fast, flying all the time, and man, that's the 45 knot effect. I feel like it goes uncontrollably. Oh man, I can't help it. <laughs> well, there are planes that let you play a role, if we could put it that way, and that's an important thing, actually. They give you a chance. Imagine yourself walking in someone's shoes. For example, a man on such a plane takes off, touch down on a yacht with a sail, and what's the point? Because just for a moment, he wants to pretend he's Christopher Columbus. America has long been discovered, and nowadays everyone knows how to get there comfortably. But people have fun playing. Well, and that's what we are doing as well in aviation. We're playing the pilots. We're thinking of ourselves as the kind of person who once on a small wooden biplane crossed the Sahara or Alaska, delivering a bag of letters north of Canada. And the mall can give you all of that. That is, you can find out the nearest airfield, take off there, and feel like you are one of the pilots who have been flying a hundred years ago, given that this aircraft has not changed much in terms of equipment since then. To be honest, there's also a fear of flying at a low speed on it. Because at similar speeds, the big one will stop flying, and this one still goes on, and it does it well. Comparing it with a cruise plane, yes, this one does not fly fast. 
only 110 miles per hour, a maximum of 125 miles per hour. But again, cruise flights, this is not about mall. And by the way, being not that small of a person, I felt comfortable inside there, freely. Oh yes, I also forgot to mention that here is a parachute system that has been installed. Here it is, very similar to the one that is installed on Cyrus. So you can use it if it's urgent and land where it's completely impossible to land. I know that the guys just flew it from Kiev to Kishinev. They came back and just yesterday this plane flew from the Carpathian Mountains. And that's the mall's purpose. It was meant to be flying there among the mountains to enjoy the local beauty and take you to the places that nothing else could take you to. What a wonderful day today. I've seen how beautiful our land is from above and how much you could see from the air only. And this plane only gives you a chance to touch everything you see when you land. In the end, friends, come and fly such wonderful planes that we fly. My name is Vladimir. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. See you in the next video.